Hi everyone, it's Anna Haferman and today I want to show how to make these snowball mittens to match your snowball beanie. Now if you have done the snowball beanie, this pattern is just really a couple extra steps. So if you already did that, you will have no trouble with this. Before we get into it, I want to thank everyone who donated to the buy me a coffee link and uh, the YouTube super thanks and also the people who became members of my channel. I appreciate your support and it really does help me to make more videos. So to begin, the yarn I'm using is this Premier Basics DK. This is a light number three yarn. So um, you can use any yarn you want, but to get your pattern to work out uh, with the number of stitches that I'm using, you will want a probably a light number three DK yarn. Uh, this is fairly inexpensive and you can order it online from Premier. And I'll give you the, uh, I'll put a link in the description. It's a easy to work with yarn. It comes in a lot of colors. So what we're going to do to begin is I'm going to cast on from 21 on the left to 21 on the right. And then I'm doing the same sort of 3-1 uh, ribbing like we did in the, actually a lot of the hats we've done and uh, the snowball beanie. So I'm gonna do 21 to 21 and then starting from the fourth needle in, which is number 18, I'm going to push every fourth one back so that I have groups of three over to two on this side. So groups of three, one out of work, three, one out of work, etc. And over here, you're only gonna have two. Now this is important because um, the setup is going to matter because we want the these little snowballs to start right here where the missing needle is. So when I'm saying start with the fourth one, that's just so everything works out the way it should. So um, I'm gonna start with the main color which is gonna be pink. And then I'm just going to leave a long tail of yarn so I can sew up with that later, you know, maybe a foot and a half. And then I'm gonna e-wrap these stitches. So this is pretty easy. If you uh, are unfamiliar with e-wrapping, I've showed it in a lot of videos. I have a um, I have a video showing how to do an automatic e-wrap, or you can just do like this. So we just go around the needle. Two, three, and we're just doing the three, and of course skipping the one that's not there. One, two, three. all the way till the end. So we're gonna do that. And then we're just gonna have the carriage set normal. So that's really just all you want is, um, my camera's pretty close today. So we want these, these levers pushed all the way back and these pushed all the way forward. So the back ones are all the way back, the front ones are all the way forward and that's just normal set up for um, basically normal. I'm gonna set the row counter to zero and then I'm gonna put my carriage to tension 3.5, basically stitch size 3.5. So right here. And like I said, if you did the snowball beanie, this is really just one extra skill, which is putting in the thumb. So it really works up the same. If you haven't done that, you may wanna do that first. You don't have to, but um, 
the thumb seems challenging, but it really isn't. So we're going to do 54 rows. 54 rows. Do that first one a little slow so that it um, knits, so everything knits off. And the second one go a little slow too. And once you get a couple rows on there, you can probably get your weights on there. So just pull those out a tiny bit and you'll be able to hang some weight. This way the uh, stitches are going to knit off more evenly. So three, and after you have three, it's much easier to hang the weights. So just hang some weight on there. It's important to keep weight on it. Four, five, six, seven. We're just going to go up to 54. And then when it starts pulling in like that, that's when you want to bring your weight up. Fifty-four. So then we'll take the weights off and then we just hang the hem the way we did in uh, the snowball beanie. Uh, a couple of the other beanies we did with the three one rib hem. So that's what it's going to look like. And you see how where the stitch was out of work, we get a big loop and that's what we're going to hang on the needle. But the first one we're going to pick up this little loop right here at the end and just hang that on the first needle we have in work then i'll have this big bar here and i'll just hang that on the empty needle and it, again this is exactly like we did it for the beanie just much smaller um, and this is a basically a mock ribbing um, because it's a mitten, it ends up uh, being snug on your wrist, so it, um, it makes it warm, which is nice for a mitten to have your wrists covered. It's been very cold here lately. So we just keep doing that. There's that last bar. And then I'm going to find this last stitch here and hang that on the last needle if I can get it. There we go. So that's pretty easy and pretty fast because you're only hanging every fourth um, needle and it looks I think it looks nice. So basically, we'll hang the hem, and uh, when we hang the hem, that's, I'm trying to get that in camera view. Let's see, okay. This is what it's gonna look like. So these are the stitches I just hung. And that's the inside of my mitten. So now we'll put some weight on there it's really important to keep this weighted because we're doing we'll be doing tuck stitch and tuck stitch needs a lot of weight so we're just going to weigh that down uh, if you don't have extra claw weights it's a good idea to get some they are very handy i have these old vintage ones that have really nice prongs that's why i'm using them because they don't seem to bend as much as the newer ones which are also vintage. So anyway, <laughs> we're going to do this tuck pattern, which we start, uh, we want it to start specifically, I want these little snowballs to nestle right in there 
with the out of stitch, out of work stitch um, that's now in work. Um, and so that's why I'm being very specific about which needles to pull first. So, so. The needles I hung are every fourth needle. So what I'm going to do now is pull the uh, needles that aren't those, um, basically the alternate needles to the ones I just hung. So that's, I'm going to start on the first needle, uh, second needle, number 20, and I'm using this 3-1 tool, and um, I'm pulling those out, except this last one. I don't want the last one, so put that one back to upper working position, or just don't pull it at all. And then I'm going to mark with my Crayola washable marker, I'm going to mark these stitches. And so I've got my green ones I'm going to mark right there. Try to do this so you guys can see it. I know sometimes it doesn't come out so well on uh, camera, but I'm marking those in green. And these, these washable markers will come right off but um, when I want them to. But they're real nice for marking. I find the green one is pretty good for marking the LK150. Uh, the yellow one's not that great, but <laughs> anyway, so then now we're starting with the pattern. So I want to put my carriage in hold, so I'm going to put that lever to one and then the lever on the other side to one. And if you have the KX350, just go to H. So then we're in hold. Now I'm going to park this pink yarn, my main yarn, over on the edge of my carriage. So what I'm going to do now is put, uh, this one's in upper working position. If you hadn't pulled that one at all, it would be like that. So basically you want one, three, 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 or actually here you want everything except that last one which would normally have come into if you did this you would have picked it so just make sure you don't get that last one because the last one is a seaming stitch and we want it to say stay we want it to knit every time we don't want it to um tuck okay so then we're doing the pattern that we did and basically it's four rows of white so we're going to go one, two, three, four, and then we're going to park this white yarn on the other side. Uh, so park it over there, then re-thread the pink yarn in the carriage. And now we want these we want to do two rows in pink and we want everything to just knit this time. So when we did this pattern for the snowball beanie, what we did was we pulled, pushed this lever to two and knit a row. Then we flipped it back and then knit another row. So they, it knit both times. Since this is a small number of needles, what I'm going to do instead, instead of worrying about the lever, every row, every couple rows. What I'm gonna do is push these needles that are in hold, I'm just gonna push them back to upper working position. Upper working position is this little thing right here, and you can see, I'll just make a little line. There's a little kind of oval there, that's where upper working position is. Uh, working position is back here, and you can see it right there. So that's working position. This is upper working position. When your carriage is in hold, they will all knit. The only thing that won't knit and that will hold is something that's pulled all the way to holding position. So since these are in upper working position, when I run the carriage across, it will knit 
all those stitches. And then I'll just knit another row. And I don't have to worry about that lever uh, remembering to flip it back every time. So, and especially with the, with the beanie, we had a lot of needles, so it was, uh, it would have been a little harder to push them all back. There's different ways of doing things. It's good to know different ways. And that's really all we did. It's just, we're just doing it a different way. So you can still do it the way that we did it in the other video, but this is the same thing essentially. So I'm now going to thread the white. I'm going to park the pink, get the white. Okay, so now I've got the white in, in the feeder. And then I'm going to, here were my green needles. Um, here's my uh, ones I picked last time. And I can tell which ones they are because there's a little V where they tucked. So I want to get the needles that are, there's three needles between each of those green marks. I want to get the ones, the one right in the middle. So it's basically, uh, there's the green one, the green one. So I want the middle of those three. Okay, so then I'll pull those. And then I'm gonna mark these with purple. And I think you can see the purple pretty well too. So I'm just marking them. I'm going to do uh, four, four rows and of white and then two rows of pink. So, and I'm still in hold because we didn't have to change. We didn't have to fool around with the levers because we're doing it just a different way. So we'll do four rows. Okay, and then we'll switch to pink. So put the, the pink is in the feeder now. I'm going to push those needles back to upper working position. These should be all the way back. I'm gonna go back to upper working position with these, um, with the needles I just held and knit two rows. And they should just knit off. Okay, so that's the pattern. It's we pull the green, do four rows white, then push them back, do two rows pink, then we push those back, or no, we, then we do, let's see, what is it? Two, four rows white. Sorry, I'm getting confused because I'm doing too many things at once. Okay, so here we are. We're at the beginning. We did green needles, four rows, two rows pink, and we did the purple needles, four rows, two rows pink. So now we're back to the green needles. So there, well, that's not the green needles. There they are. So we're doing the green needles. And remember, we never pull that last one, even though it seems like it would be in the pattern because I wanna have a nice seaming stitch. So then I'm going to do one, two, three, four rows white, change to pink, change to pink, and do, push these back to upper working position, so they should be right where I marked that, somewhere within that little mark. And then we're just gonna do the two rows of pink. One, two. So then we change back to white. So now we need to pull, let's see, we'd want one more for this mitten. And this basically is, I think, maybe a women's, I think it's probably a women's medium. I have kind of a small hand and it's, um, it's a little, you know, it's, it's roomy here. Uh, and then this fits well. So here I did four repeats. I think on me, three might, would've, would've, might, <laughs> might have worked. 
I did four. I think this will fit medium women's hat hand. I'm going to give you uh, the measurements of the one we finished so that you can compare and uh, see if you think it's going to fit you. I don't have every size worked out, so uh, you may have to just do a practice one, test it for size, and then see what you want to do. So here, I wanted to do four repeats. And now that I've been talking a lot, I can't remember what, where I was. So here's the way to do this, the way to know which ones you're on is here's a little V. Those are the ones we tucked the last time. So that's the green ones. So we pick the purple ones. So it's real easy to see where you are. So that just under the V, you pick the other ones. So that's pretty, pretty sweet. So we'll do four rows of white. Okay, and now we are on the thumb. So the thumb is the only real tricky part. And it's really not really that tricky. So don't worry, just I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go slow and then you can if you don't get it just pause and go back if you need to so here we go we've got four repeats that's this one two three four and actually I still need my two uh, two rows we're going to do two rows of pink so I'm gonna push these back to upper working position. And then we're going to do the thumb. So we're going to go one, two. Okay, now we're going to start the thumb. So I've got the pink in the feeder still, and I'm going to pull out two, four, six, eight needles for the thumb, uh, for part of the thumb. So here they are. And then I'm going to e-wrap these. So one, two so I e-wrapped these eight needles on the right okay so now what I want to do is I want to knit the thumb on these needles plus I'm going to push these out two four six eight I'm going to push those to upper working position so I'm going to be on these eight and these eight. So the rest of them, um, the rest of the needles, whoops. All right. So I've got 16 needles that that's what the thumb's going to be knit on. So I'm going to push those back to upper working position. Just keep them there. And then everything else I'm going to push to hold. Okay. Because now I want to knit just on these needles so those are in upper working position they could have uh, been in working position but after you you have to kind of maneuver them so we're going to keep them in upper working position these are going to be held and now i'm going to knit oh, my first row i'm going to go really slow because i want to knit uh, i want these stitches to knit off so i'm going to go one okay and then really try to get a weight on there if i can two okay so now what's happening is i'm knitting on these 16 needles and i'm trying to um i want to do 18 rows so i did two let's just go up here two, three, four, and you really want to get a weight right in there, five, six, seven, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, so that's eighteen stitches, and that's my thumb to begin. So now what we're going to do is take, and this is how we did uh, 
a lot of the tops of the hats we did is just gathered. So what we'll do is take that first needle, transfer it to the second one, the next one, transfer it. We're just trying, trying to reduce the number of stitches so we can gather the top of the thumb and it's not super bulky. So we're just moving those over. All right. And I want to put the ones that I, the ones that don't have any yarn stitch on them, I want those back to a uh, non-working position. And then I just want to knit one row. And it can be a little difficult because you've got those two stitches on there. So just go slow. So then I'll take this yarn and cut it. And I'm going to cut it I'm going to leave myself a longish tail because I'm going to be sewing the thumb up with this eventually. So, so here's that tail. It doesn't really have to be that long, but you'll want, it's better to err on the side of uh, longer than shorter. So here I'm just threading that tail into a uh, I use a double-eyed transfer tool. You can use a darning needle uh, or whatever. I have these handy, so I use those. And then I'm going from the, uh, even though my yarn ended at the left, I'm going to go through from the right and go through each of these stitches so that um, I can sew them off. Okay, so then I've got that. Now I'm just going to take that, those off. I'm going to just take them off because they've been sewn off, so they're not going to run. And that's going to be the top of the um, top of the thumb. And we'll at the end we'll gather that, but I don't want to do it quite yet. So. This is the tricky part. Okay, so here's the what we knit. This was the thumb that we knit, okay? So those were the eight stitches we cast on. We e-wrapped, and then those were the eight that we had. So then we knit the 18 rows. So what we need to do now is, okay, it's facing you. This is the purl side facing you, and then just go fold it down towards you. So now you're looking at the knit side, right? So I went, it was like this. I folded it down towards me, okay? Then I'm going to fold it this way. So like the way you might, I guess, close a book backwards. Um, I'm going to go that way, okay? So, it was, it was like this. I went toward me. Okay, I had the pearl side showing, knit side back like that, okay? So that's what's gonna be the thumb. And now we need to rehang it here so it, uh, it attaches. So the way to do this is you have one stitch right here. I hope you can see that. Can you see that? Okay, so this, here's where the white is. I'm gonna go this, it, there's two threads that uh, are right next to the white, and I'm gonna use those. I want four, okay, I want two, four. Okay, so I want those eight stitches back. So I've got that first stitch that's right next to the white. And this is actually not, I don't want to confuse it. This is not actually the stitch, but we are, this is what we're hanging. So this is, there's that white and there's that that hung right next to it. And that's what I'm going to hang on that needle. Then if I go over, I see two yarn, two pieces of, 
two strands of yarn and that's what I'm going to hang on the next needle. Then I go over here, there's two strands of yarn. Okay, now where, let's see. And there. Mine seems to want to tighten up a little bit. It's right through there. And there's another one. You can kind of see them better when you open it up. There's, it almost looks like a little hole. So we're ha hanging two th uh, strands on each needle, on the eight needles, two. Okay, and then there's two more here. And then we're going to pick up these, this right here. There's two strands there. It's hard to see, but that's it. And we're hanging it on that needle so that you should have a, a stitch already on there plus the new one you hung. So we're kind of overlapping it a little. So the, um, and that way it'll close up a lot easier. Let's see if you can see that. So you see how there was, this one has, already has a stitch on it and we're overlapping the next one, okay? So now we've got those hung on the needles. I'm gonna go out to hold and, uh, so now we're back to the same number of needles we had at the beginning. So we're 21 to 21 and I want to hang, uh, I've got my white yarn kind of under there. I want to get it over here. So it's coming from that side and I want to get my carriage and move it over here. So I've got that white yarn is coming from right there from where this is where the pattern was. That was the last white that I knit. And so um, I want to make sure that yarn is coming from there. And then hang this so it's weighted down. Okay, so now, now what we want to do is get back into the pattern. So here's what we did. We hung this, um, hung the thumb, and now we want to go back and do beginning. So it might be easier if I show you this inside out. Um, okay, so yeah, this is the back of it. That's the thumb. And that's where I just hung it right there. So if you can picture that, then the, the pattern starts again. So what I need to do now is get back into the pattern. And now I need to figure out which ones, which needles I want pulled to hold. So here's the V. And so that's a purple needle. So what I want is the green needles to be held. So if you have the LK150, you have one of these tools. So you could go I want the green selected, so you could just push back everything that's not green with this tool, go all the way to upper working position, or only to upper working position. Or if you have a different machine, just push everything to upper working position. Okay, and then we want to, um, have the greens held. So we'll just hold these green needles. Okay. And that's our pattern again. So that's all we did was uh, stopped the pattern in order to hang that thumb and the thumb at the end, we're going to gather that and sew it up the side. So that's how that's going to work. Okay. So that's all we do now is we start again in our pattern and we're still in hold, and we'll do four rows. One, two, three, four. And then we'll switch to pink. So you're going to have to re-thread the pink now because you had cut it. So then re-thread the pink. Okay. 
and your carriage should be ready to go. Uh, you should be in hold. So, uh, but since you've um, actually what we need to do now, we need to push these back to upper work again. Forgot that part. And then knit two rows. Okay, so now that's what we've done there. So now, again, we're just going to do eight total repeats. It's actually four repeats of the pattern because one repeat is both, but it'll have eight, eight rows of snowballs here. So, so starting from the thumb, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's one. So now we're going to pull the, I think it's the purple this time. Do the four rows. One, two, three, four. Switch to pink. I'm gonna push these back to upper working position. Two rows. So here we are. I've got uh, actually set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want one more repeat. One, two, three, four. And um, that's going to be it for the white. So I'm going to cut my white yarn. And so. And that's my white. And then I'm going to put a clip on that yarn. And actually, I want it behind like that. Then I'm going to put my pink in. Now, well, this time, I'm just going to put my carriage, I'm going to cancel the hold uh, on both sides and knit two rows. And I can leave these needles out because I canceled the hold. I could have just pushed them back and knit like we have been doing, but I'm just doing it a slightly different way. I'm going to knit two rows, which was the end of our pattern. And then I'm going to transfer some stitches. And now this is going to be the top of the mitten. And the top of the mitten looks like this. Um, what I have done is I've transferred it slightly differently than we normally do. What I'm doing is transferring one stitch to a middle stitch and another one, and then having one in work. And that's kind of keeps it, the pattern, it kind of fits in nicely with the pattern. These are the, um, these are the tops of the bubbles. So what I'm doing is going uh, for the first, let's see how I'm going to do this. Yeah, the first stitch, I'm going to take off the needle, the second stitch, sorry, I'm going to take off and transfer it to the right. And then I'm going to leave that one alone. Then I'm going to take the next one transfer it to the green. When I marked in green, I'm going to take the next one and go back to the same one. Okay. So what I've done is I've got, this one's a little different because it's, this has two stitches on it. Then that one only has one. This one has three. This will have one. Then I'll transfer that to the green. Uh, the one I marked in green and that one as well. So that way this will just make it uh, come out a little better when we're um, when we've done finished with the top. So let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that purple stitch alone. The next stitch too close here. <laughs> The next stitch I'm going to pick up, put 
to the green when I marked in green take the next one and go backwards so so I've got one three one three one three and I'm just gonna go across like that the purple one will be left alone the next one and this just makes the top of the mitten look a little bit nicer and it uh, eliminates some bulk so so I have actually two on that one don't worry about that one one the purple ones have one the green ones have three and then make sure all of these are back in non-working position and so I'm going back to three and a half and then I'm going to knit three rows I'm going to go slow I actually am going to pull everything out to holding position and I'm not in hold so these will knit off and because I have extra stitches pulling them all the way out helps them knit off a little better so we'll go one and I'm going to go two and three okay okay now what I'm going to do is take my yarn out of the carriage I'm on the left take the yarn out of the carriage and I'm going to cut it and I want enough to go across and back because what I'm going to do is sew off from even though I'm on the left I'm sewing off from the right and I'll put a link where you can get these you can of course use a darning needle so then I'm just going to um, sew off every stitch okay so I've sewed everything off take my weights off so here's the ribbing four sets of pattern the thumb eight and then the top and this is what we have there's the thumb okay so the thumb needs to be pushed through to the right side and then the thumb there's a uh, let's not worry about that so here's the top where we gathered the thumb we're just going to cinch that okay so that's pretty easy to do because you don't have very many stitches then I'm going to take this yarn and sew the thumb up first okay so I cinched up the top of the thumb now I'm going to thread my transfer tool or darning needle whatever you have and I'm going to go um, on the top side I'm going to go to the bottom and go one stitch in so that's a whole stitch it's hard to tell but that is a whole stitch I'm going to grab two bars I would match a stitch with two bars rather than one I think it makes it's faster and it seems like it's less bulky so then I'm going to go here and go one so I'm a whole stitch in two bars there I'm really trying to do this so you can see okay two I'm just going to sew down the side of this um, sew down the side till I get to the bottom and then I'll show you how to join join it okay so when we get here it looks like you're gonna have a big hole but we're gonna keep going and get one two more here and then we're going to get two more here and then what I do go to this side so then you just are going to want to close this hole up uh, so you don't have a gaping hole so what you can do is go in that so let's see here's where I am I'm going to go in here and here I'm just kind of closing it up from the inside so it doesn't look uh, so it doesn't gape and I'm also going to try to close that up a little that's how the pattern ends up but um, hello Roxy 
um, my cat is here saying hello. So um, really all I'm doing is trying to close this up so that it doesn't gape so that you can't really even see where it was. So then just, you know, on the back, weave that yarn in so that, um, so that it doesn't go anywhere. Now we will start on the bottom over here. And this one, we're just going to sew it up just like we sewed up the hat. So we go from here, from here to here, and then like that, and then get to the uh, pattern. And sewing this part, the um, ribbing is pretty straightforward. It's exactly like you did it for the hat, but uh, let's see, we'll go right Here's what I'm going to do. Pick up that first one, two. And we've done this on a lot of the hats, so um, you probably know how to do this. So the way that this pattern matches up, what I want to do is get uh, pink from the top, pink one, and then a white one. So it, So you've got a pink... Well, all right, so there's the pink and the white. Okay, so now you can skip one if you have to, if it doesn't, if it's not working out the way you want, just make sure you get to a pink and a white. It's pink, then white. Sorry, pink, then white. Then come down here and you will be getting a two white bars. So on the bottom, you will be picking up one, two, there's that two. So you had four strands of white on each side. So you should be picking up one. Yeah, mine are kind of blending together here. So we're going to get one, two. Then when you get to the top, first you did white, pink. Then you did white, white. Now you're going to do white, white again. Then you'll go down here, do white, white. The This first row is a little tight, but then you go to top and you get white. Your next one is white, then the next one is pink. Okay, so it, it, this way it'll match up. So then we go down here and you get to pink uh, and they tighten up sometimes so there's two pink then at the top we start again with we'll go in where we came out we'll get a pink and then a white bar and I know that looks like two it's actually only one so pink then white we go down here we get white white Go back up here, and it's white, white. Down here, it's going to be white, white again. Then at the top, it is white, pink. And it is sometimes hard to see where you are. So we're white, pink. And when we come back, we get the two pink strands. Because remember, we went across with the carriage twice with the pink. So we have two strands of pink. Can you see those? There they are. Okay. And then when we're at the top, we're going to get a pink and then a white. And mine are kind of tight and yours may be too, but that's what you're doing. You're getting a pink bar and a white one. And this, because the stitches don't match up evenly, they're like slightly jogged on the side, that's why you're doing it that way. So then we go here to white. Up here, we're going to do to white. And then down here, it's to white again. Then on the top, it's going to be white, then pink. 
So they're just sort of offset when they're lined up, and that's just how knitting is. Then we get back down here, it's pink, pink. So I can write this in the description. It goes starting, it goes, uh, let's see, pink, white. So it goes pink, white. Then you go white, white. Then it's white, white, the two in the middle. Because we had four strands of white yarn each time. So we need to make sure we're picking up. We go two, then two, so we're on white, white again. And then here we would be on white, pink. And here's the part where it's a little tricky uh, because A, you want to close this up and it's kind of tight, but just grab that you'll find a pink one in there. So go white, pink, okay? And you want it to match up. And then back here, we're back to the two pink yarns. Then when we're up here, we're going to be on uh, pink white and so we're gonna have to find a pink stitch that we can just get in there so let's see it's actually gonna be in here somewhere but as long as it looks good so we're gonna go pink white so you really just want it to match up nicely that's what you're aiming for and then these are the four white threads but because they were so close to the edge they're going to be uh, sort of you know very close to each other so we go two let's see one two okay then we get back here and I know I did two and then it's going to be two more here so even if you can't really see what you're doing uh and actually there's two white threads there's a pink one behind it so sometimes they just get um you know they're hard to find so and then here we're going to be white pink where was my white one yeah, yeah i think i got it wrong that last time but i'll just go white pink because I want it to match up then I want these two pink ones so you see how it um, it looks seamless and there's this is my seam right here so you can see it's difficult to see it's actually right here so you see when I pull it apart you can see but when it's closed you can't see it so that's what you're aiming for because you you really just don't want the mitten to be um, off. So if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, ask in the comments. Um, so we get to the top and sew that up. However looks good. Then I'm just going to gather the top. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so then you just want to get this as tight as you can because you don't want you don't want a big hole in the top of your mitten. And just get that as tight as you can. So if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. If you have questions, let me know. I don't have every single size of this pattern written out. I will try to um, give you suggestions as if you were going to make it bigger or smaller. You would need to, you would need to go down in stitches by a multiple of eight. Otherwise it's just not gonna line up right. So put that in there and then you can tie those together. So that's it. And I should pull that down a little. So that's it. And again, if you want to change dimensions, you could put three here, then do the thumb and do, I have eight, but my hand's pretty short. So you may want to add a couple, um, whatever you want to do. But again, I really, really, really suggest 
doing this first with some yarn that you don't really care that much about just to get your pattern just to get the pattern down the techniques and pattern and then you start with a yarn that you like so that it um so that once you start with that good yarn then you know how to do it see how nice that seam looks you can, can't even see it um it is right there it's hard to see but it's right there and this is a roomy mitten you don't um you might this will fit a wider hand if you wanted it tighter just get eight you decrease eight stitches i like it like this because it's roomy and warm so you guys have a good day and i'll see you soon